What does the Cowboys wide receiver lo- room look like heading into mini camps and training camp in about a month and a half? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team Locked every on. day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. And today's episode is brought to you by betonline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts. I am Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. You can ch- follow Landon on Twitter at McCool BC, B, excuse me, McCool BCB. Landon, what's going on today, sir? Not much. Uh, we're making our way through our positional uh, check-ins before uh, training camp and as OTAs are kind of roaring on. And we have definitely reached an interesting one. Uh, wide receiver is a position that has been much talked about in the offseason because of all the changes uh, there's some new faces, so there's there's a lot to get to here. Uh, yeah, so let's just go ahead and dive right into it. We've got like eight, nine, ten receivers that we want to talk about. We want to yeah. spend enough time on each one. Let's start with C.D. Lamb. Um, I think the expectations surrounding Lamb this year is that he's going to have a monster season. But what exactly is he capable of? Do you think he's capable of being a top five, top three receiver in the NFL? Or is it more likely he falls in that 10 to 12 range? I mean, I think it depends on what we're kind of judging this by. I, I think he has the opportunity, and I think I'm not alone. This just like looking at, you know, and not to get too much into fantasy football, but looking at some of the folks that are big into projecting this sort of thing. I mean, I think you look at the target share percentage that he's looking at this year with Cooper gone. I think you're looking at the, the skill set the jump that he's likely to have going into this year. I think that there's an opportunity that, you know, CeeDee Lamb could – potentially lead the league in receiving receiving this year i mean just because of his talent level the targeting all that you know could add up into a a very big season for him so uh, i don't know if that means that he's the best receiver in the the league but i think that that means that he's kind of in that top echelon of receivers that uh you know is getting a large majority of the defense's focus and is getting a large majority of the offense's focus as well yeah, I think for me, it's not going to be so much the big games because he's going to have monster games this season. Like, there's going to be a handful of games where he goes 130 and two touchdowns. Like, those are just going to happen when you're getting targeted as much as he will be. I think the thing for me is, can he limit the amount of games in which yeah. he's basically a non-factor? Like, for example, yeah. there was four games last year where he had fewer than 45 receiving yards. Those kind of games can't happen. And I I think the Cowboys are going to do a better job of making sure he's involved. But he's got to be somebody every week you can count on. Hey, he's going to get me seven catches for 95 yards. Like that. that's kind of the stuff that they need from C.D. Lamb. It's funny because, you know, you, you, Mike McCarthy the other day was talking about, you know, the kind of elite moniker, right? And he was talking about it in, in conjunction with Michael Parsons. But I think it applies here as well. A, a, a kind of, uh, you know, forgotten part of being elite is – elite consistency doing it day in and day out having that high level of performance when you're elite it doesn't just come and go like it's something that is done every single day it's something that is rely relied upon so i think that's really what we've seen from cd lamb throughout his early part of his of his career is that he has elite skills he does elite things the the, the part that we need him to kind of step into before he becomes that top tier kind of echelon receiver is uh, uh, you know, the, the elite consistency doing yes. it every week, every week. And I look at like Cooper cup last year who led the NFL in receiving yards. Um, he had seven games with at least 120 receiving yards. That's great. And all those games, he had double digit targets, but what's even more impressive is he had one game all season with fewer than 90 receiving yards. He's just yep. got to be a point where he's so good that the Rams can't justify not getting him 10 targets in a game. Right. And he finds a way to be productive no matter what the coverage is. That's what the Cowboys need from CeeDee Lamb, where they're just they can bank on it every single game, getting that 80, 90, 100 yards, as opposed to like what maybe the Cowboys didn't get from like Des Bryant, you know, five, six years ago, where Des would have some amazing games and then he'd be two for 23. And frankly, I could say the same thing about Amari. Amari did that way too often for the Cowboys, right? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing is you're trying to find something to hang your hat on, right? You're, you're trying to find a level of consistency, someone that you can run your offense through. I think at times what the Cowboys found is that they had so many choices last year that when it came time to like have something to rely upon, they struggled there. Yes, you know they struggled to find a a, a, a an easy. We talked about it, an easy button, a play that works consistently, a play that they they can get you know a, a, a sure assured third down on a, a play that they can uh, feel comfortable uh, going to when things are not going their way. It, it felt like they it, it was be, like they were being pulled in so many different directions, trying to serve so many masters. Uh, and try to get too many people the ball that when it became time for like needing th that person to step up and make a play, there wasn't any one player that was getting exactly. the ball consistently enough to kind of be that the man, you know? And I, so I think that what they're, the Cowboys have done this off season is clearly cleared off the runway and, and they are planning on loading CD lamb up with a bunch of Good. targets this year and seeing Good. what he does. And the, the good thing about that is C.D. Lamb's contract's coming up here in a little bit. If you're going to pay him like a late receiver, better start producing like one. So yep. we'll see. Uh, all right. Next one, Michael Gallup. A lot of yep. people are getting really worried about Michael Gallup not being ready in week one, and they're worried about the Cowboys' wide receiver core this season. I honestly don't worry about it that much because Gallup will be back, and he should be back for the majority of the season. But – what are you expecting from Gallup when he returns to the field in a bigger role? Because I do think the Cowboys are going to ask more of him now going into year five. Yeah. I mean, I think similar to, to Cooper, right? I mean, I think you, 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 you're going to distribute those. I think he had something, Cooper had something like a hundred targets last year or something like that. So you're going to redistribute those targets amongst the guys that you have on this team. I, they're not just like, all going to get dumped in Jalen Tolbert's lap and say, okay, you figure out how to yep. do something with these 100 targets. Likely what they're going to do is give a, a, a large percentage of those targets to CeeDee Lamb, as we just mentioned, and then a good percentage of those is going to go to Michael Gallup as well once he's healthy. And I think you, know, you, you, you listen to what the Cowboys say when they talk about Gallup or what other people say about Gallup. When he's healthy – he has that kind of potential to be a number one wide receiver on an offense, you know? And I think that that's the thing that we kind of have lost sight of at times is that, you know, this team doesn't have like a lack of wide receiver talent. They've got a, quite a pair. And, and if Jalen Tolbert turns out to be good, you've got, re you really do have something going there. I, I think that if anything, they're allowing these younger players who, uh, you know, still have ceilings to grow into the kind of room that they need to develop and, and have opportunity to get more and more targets to make more and more of those opportunities. Now, again, for someone like Gallup, he's got to get healthy first. And we got to see exactly what he looks like once he gets healthy because it's an ACL tear and you just never know exactly how quickly they come back from those situations. But in the long term, I'm not at all worried about Michael Gallup. I think he's a fantastic receiver. The Cowboys. I'm not worried about his injury stuff, right? I, no, he'll be yeah. fine. I, I'm so more I think worried about the rest of his game, right? Like I, <laughs> I want to be careful how I'm saying this stuff. I, I think he's a really good deep ball receiver. He has an outstanding ability to, to create separation down the field. He makes some acrobatic catches. I am a little bit worried about the rest of his game. Like I think he needs to be a more polished route runner underneath and we'll see about, how, I mean, he has always been pretty good after the catch, but because he's always been like the wide receiver two, wide receiver three, he hasn't always had to be the most polished guy. I think the Cowboys need him to be better in that area this year. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't at all be surprised we're going to see him run a whole different wide variety of routes. And look, I mean, a lot of why they ran him on such a spe specified route tree last year is because, you know, they were trying to fit all those wide receivers into a game plan, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and Gallup was one of the few guys that had a very well-defined – uh, uh, obvious strength and that was you know going down the going down the field and, and catching those balls so I, I think if anything just getting him more touches in more different scenarios uh is going to help kind of develop his game and his, in his route tree a little bit more all right we're going to continue to talk about these cowboys wide receivers a little bit down further on the depth chart but before we do that i want to tell you guys about blue nile whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment Find jewelry that is unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Blue Nile will then handcraft a perfect engagement ring with each ring being one of a kind. 
Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Cowboys listeners will get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement. All you have to do is use promo code Locked On. Again, promo code Locked On. Check out BlueNile.com today. We also want to tell you about our old friends at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock up on all the parts you need. But Rock Auto has everything from engine control modules, brake parts, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. All right, let's talk about James Washington, a veteran receiver coming over for the Steelers, likely going to play a big role early in the season while Michael Gallup gets healthy. What are you expecting from Washington in his first year with the Cowboys? Well, I mean, I think that's, you know, the kind of initial thought, right? Is that, you know, you, you don't, you don't really know exactly what Gallup's timeline is. You hope that he's going to be back, you know, hopefully after the first few games, maybe, maybe after the first month, the idea with Washington is that he comes in and, and he can comp- provide some good snaps, some good targets early on while you're waiting for Gallup to kind of get back into the roster. And then once Gallup's back on, he still can, prov- you know, kind of split time until Gallup feels, you know, fully comfortable there. Um, you know, I, I just think that they they liked the idea that he's kind of a down the field receiver a little mm-hmm. bit. He he can you know he has that's one thing again. Much like Gallup, you know, Washington has kind of has had a very kind of defined skill set of being able to get down the field, uh, being able to go up and get the football. I think that that's kind of a very easy uh, one for one translation for Washington uh, in into Gallup's role. And then you know beyond that, I I don't know that they have anything you know, specific for him. Like, you know, I, I think that if they were to get more than that out of him uh, and, and be pleasantly surprised, I wouldn't be, you know, shocked, I guess, if he be, you know, was part of a down roster rotation once Gallup got back. Uh, I think it also depends on how some of these other guys on the roster sh- show up. I think it also depends on if the Cowboys end up going out and getting a veteran right wide receiver, which I think is still kind of in play at this point. So uh, it's not a great start that he was in a walking boot. He's been dealing with tendonitis. None of those things are great. Uh, but I, I also am not terribly concerned because he's a veteran. I don't think he's going to have any issues kind of getting up in, into the playbook and that sort of things. But I, I do think that you, you need a guy to be in there and, and, and kind of just to help facilitate some of these practices. Cause otherwise, you know, you've got Simi Vahoko, you've got Vasher running with the ones and, and, and those guys are great. And I'd like getting them guys, those guys reps with the ones. Uh, but at the same time, you would still love to have kind of an upper echelon or a higher tier of wide receiver kind of helping you facilitate practice with Dak. I feel like he has one of the bigger ranges on the Cowboys team this year because I could certainly sure. see a situation where we're going into week one. He's your one of your starting outside receivers because Michael Gallup's not ready. Jalen Tolbert's a yep. rookie. And all of a sudden against Tampa Bay, you know, Tampa Bay's they're doubling or bracketing CeeDee Lamb, and it's James Washington that gets nine targets in that game. Like that's that's very realistic, right? It's, yeah. And it wouldn't be shocking too. Like he, he goes from playing with Mason Rudolph, Devlin Hodges, Josh Dobbs, Ben Roethlisberger, and all of a sudden he gets with a good quarterback and he takes off. Yeah. But I also could see Landon like, hey, if Michael Gallup is ready by week one and Jalen Tolbert looks ready to go and the Cowboys are excited about Simi Fahoku and Noah Brown continues to be like that number five receiver on the roster, maybe he's not even on this team because he's played six total special team snaps over the last two years. Like he's not going to help yeah. you. On special teams. So there's an outside chance that he's the number two receiver to start the year. And there's a decent chance that he's not on the roster either. He's honestly, it feels more and more every day that it's just like, he's just strictly an insurance policy because you're right. He's not going to provide you anything as as a down roster uh, guy. It's not like, you know, later when everybody, if everybody was healthy, that he would necessarily beat out Noah Brown for a down roster spot because he can't play special teams. And Noah Brown he's is not actually... the blocker that Noah Brown is either. So like in those certain packages where you need to come in and block a linebacker, he's not going to do that. So, yeah, it's so, uh, you know, it's very precarious. Uh, and, and again, I think it's why they're, they're not afraid to go ahead and bring in another, like there's been talk about potentially having, bringing in another veteran wide receiver. Cause 
you know, is they just they got a they got a guy on a cheap deal that they felt like could have uh, uh, some potential for upside there. Uh, but I don't think that they're beholden to James Washington at this point. So uh, he feels like a placeholder until somebody yeah. gets healthy or somebody's ready to go. Yeah, it's like the, the very bare minimum bottom. Like this is the floor. If they can yep. improve on it, they're not going to be afraid to. Uh, but this is like, hey, at the very least, James Washington is here to facilitate you know the game if if Gallup isn't back and if we can't get anybody else. All right, let's talk about their third round rookie, Jalen Tolbert, uh, who has missed the last two weeks of OTAs due to hamstring tightness. Uh, the expectation is he should be ready to go for mini camp and certainly by training camp. What do you expect from him as a rookie? You know, it's tough to know. I mean, it's 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 a situation where you have a guy who has a kind of a reputation of being a very well uh, refined re- receiver coming out of college. Um, he's very mature. Uh, he definitely has some upside because he hasn't been playing the position terribly long. So I think that there are some aspects of his game that are uh, uh, that are probably uh, more ready to go than the average wide receiver. But there's definitely aspects that are 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 probably lagging behind as well. So you know, and then you factor in the fact that he came in from a different level of competition. Um, you know, I just think it's it's a learning curve that's kind of hard to uh, to see for people like us that you know aren't, aren't getting to see him day to day, and especially since he didn't get a chance to practice uh, in OTAs, we, we're not kind of getting any peaks or any kind of whispers of exactly how he's doing. So it's very difficult to say. And again, I, I mean, you talk about one of the uh, you talked about like w- the widest uh, you know spectrum range, of, right? of outcomes. Yeah, the range of outcomes. I, uh, Tolbert still is really wide to me, right? Because I think he could maybe continue to struggle with injury stuff, really struggle to get on the field late, and then just can't quite get into the playbook, can't quite get onto the field the way you want him to. He could pick it all right, right up and, and start week one as your wide receiver three and, and maybe even two uh, because he's so impressive. I mean, I, I I honestly think that those are outcomes that could happen, but it's, it's hard to tell exactly where he's going to fall on that kind of range as it is right now, but the fact that he's missed two weeks worth of OTAs and maybe not two weeks. Cause I mean, I think that last OTA he was doing some stuff, but it just wasn't everything. Yep. I, I think that that's obviously not a, a good sign for the kind of latter uh, uh, part of, of what I suggested, but I, I don't think it's outside the, po- the realm of possibilities that he still is a, a guy that is seeing significant snaps against Tampa Bay week one. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a little bit on the Michael Gallup kind of career path where, you know, Gallup didn't play a lot in the first four or five weeks of his career, but he would make a splash play every once in a while. I remember his long touchdown he had against Washington. I think it was right before the bye week. Um, I I, I don't know if you can rely on Tolbert to be like your wide receiver three this year. You just play him 75% of snaps, but if he's playing 30, 35%, wouldn't be surprised if he has a couple really nice games and a couple of moments. And then by 2023, he's locked and loaded as your wide receiver three. And you feel really good about your top three receivers again. Well, the way I envisioned it, and I hope that they do too, honestly, is that you, you've you got Gallup once he comes back. CD and Gallup are your, your main two. And then your third wide receiver is kind of a cobbled together uh, uh, set of snaps between Noah Brown, between uh, – between uh, Tony Pollard, uh, uh, Tony Pollard, yep. and, and then yeah, and then you you're, you're putting in Tolbert there. Obviously, I think Tolbert of those three will get the the majority of the shares of, of of snaps. But I think that the point is is that you're not giving him a full share of wide receiver three snaps. You're trying different things. You're yes. putting different people out there, uh, and maybe even just like uh, uh uh you know now that you've got Ferguson, you, you're playing a little bit more twelve personnel. So maybe those snaps, eleven personnel snaps, are are down just slightly than for, they were a year before. All right, we got a couple more down the roster receivers to talk about. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about betonline.net. It's your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's NBA Finals. Uh, we've got the Hockey Conference Finals are going on right now, MLB. We've got UFC. There's boxing fights going on all the time. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Lynn, let's just run through a couple of these guys really, really quickly. Just a, hmm. a couple sentences or two. Simi Fahoku, uh, getting a lot of reps in, in OTAs right now. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, a guy that they've asked to kind of get bigger a little bit, to kind of play some more of that Noah Brown kind of hybrid H-back role. Uh, definitely needs to have more consistency in his game. 
Uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly where he ends up, but I, I think he's kind of in competition to be sort of the new Noah Brown, mm -hmm. maybe with a little bit more uh, receiving ability and a little bit less of the special teams blocking ability. Speaking of Noah Brown, he's somebody who's receiving yards, targets, uh, yards per catch have gone up uh, every season that he's been in the NFL. Wouldn't be shocked if he sees a little bit bigger role in the offense. He's certainly somebody who's close to Dak Prescott. If he's your wide receiver for this year, I don't think that's anything to worry about. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, he's a guy that he has physical skills. I mean, he's he was a, he's a quite a physical specimen. If you look at his numbers when he came into the league, he was also very, very young. He was friends with Zeke at Ohio State. That's actually probably likely how he got drafted, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that he's shown that he's he's grown a little bit every single year. If you can get him to kind of develop even just a little bit more as a wide receiver, he has a physical skill set that is impressive. I think he, he's tough get, as get the, nails. Oh my gosh, yeah. is he tough? Get him the ball with give him, give him the, the ball in his hands on the move. And I think that he's going to, you know, especially on a, a situation where he's the down roster mix, uh, matchup, right? You got him out on the field with a bunch of other guys and he gets lost and somehow he's on a safety or on a linebacker. Get him the ball on the move and let him you know, pull away because he has that kind of ability. But as for now, he is your special teams ace on this wide receiver roster. Uh, there's a very high likelihood that he's obviously making the team this year unless Simi Fahoku takes pretty several big steps away from, from him. Yeah, Noah Brown's going to be on this team. He just plays too yeah. important of a role, and he just gives you such a high floor for your third receiver, right? If you need him to come in there and block and catch stuff, you know, I, whether it's on the little PA rollouts or down the, the field or in the slot, he can do all that. It, and he actually, he had some really nice plays last year. So, uh, all right, let's 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 move on. TJ Vasher, somebody that we didn't get to see at all in training camp or preseason last year because of an injury. If you aren't familiar with Vasher, he is a six foot six. 200 pound receiver he is skinny but a huge huge catch radius yeah i i, I thought you were going to call him an albatross because he <laughs> certainly looks like an albatross i mean he's got the largest wingspan i'm pretty sure in the history of the combine for a wide receiver if i'm not uh, mistaken i mean it's absolutely enormous he's huge I, he's huge i mean and, and he's and i think that that's an, an interesting body an interesting skill set he has an incredible catch radius that obviously goes along with that with that uh, wingspan uh, he's a different type of player than some of these other guys. I think he's, you know, he's going to be a guy that could be potentially a real red zone threat. Uh, he, he's he's a guy that just, you know, he's going to be able to use that size to his advantage. I mean, the thing is, learning the route tree, learning how to separate, learning how to kind of get some, uh, uh, use that physicality in a way that's actually mm -hmm. beneficial in route. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they use him a little bit. I'm very interested to see what he looks like in OTAs because he definitely needed to take a step. But if he has taken a step and it's enough that he's earned some playing time, he gives you a another kind of club in your golf bag that maybe you didn't have previously. You know, a kind of red zone, uh, big catch radius type that uh, is still kind of slightly different than the gallops and semi Vahoku types. When's the last time the Cowboys have had a receiver that's been this big, like six four or bigger? It's been a long time. Yeah, I mean, I it, they don't normally go for those kind of real big body types. Um, so six, this five, one's five eights. Yeah, and 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 again, like with arms that are way longer than his than his height. So uh, he is very different than kind of than the Cowboys normally have. Um, I'm trying to think, like. It was hate was uh what's the guy that we went to Miami Hearns did Al, how tall was Alan no, Hearns? Hearns was like six two so they they honestly six, they have not had a receiver yeah like this in a long long time well so. I mean C D Lamb grew three inches this offseason, so maybe he's <laughs> no I'm just kidding no yeah you're uh, right they don't have a lot of tall receivers like this yeah uh, all right let's move on to to some other ones uh, we talked about Dontario Drummond and Ty Fry Fogel uh, in a previous podcast go check those guys out but Drummond really more of a slot receiver with very very below average speed. Fry Fogel had huge production one year at Indiana, but otherwise kind of lackluster career. Any shot either of those guys make the roster? I mean, we've been hearing that Fry Fogel looks pretty decent, which is, you know, again, I, I just didn't see it with his tape. So maybe, maybe I'm missing it with him, but, but I mean, again, like I, we're going to see a lot more in, in training camp, you know, what these guys do. I think that's where they'll get the best chance to shine. Yeah, the only other receiver that's really worth mentioning is Brandon Smith. He He's a guy that the Cowboys signed last year out of Iowa. Very similar body type play style to, to Noah Brown. Uh, yeah. Really good after the catch. 
Um, he had some moments in preseason in training camp, but I'm really curious to see what he looks like in year two. Yeah, uh, I, I, he's a guy that, you know, another guy kind of like Vasher who had very kind of intriguing physical uh, attributes that you wondered, you know, what's a year of development going to look like with this guy? Uh, you know, just a physical specimen, big, strong, you know, uh, dangerous after the catch because of his size and his ability to break tackles. Uh, you know, I, I think you hope that he could be a special teamer just based on his, you know, physical skill set and his in his body. Uh, but I think that that's really where he's going to have to make his his way onto this team. Is you know, he's behind a couple of these other guys that are have that have better kind of pedigrees than they do than he does. Um, so he's really going to need to have a good showing in training camp and OTAs to kind of prove that uh, he has he has he deserves a spot on this team because, like I said, it feels like they've got three or four guys that are all kind of in the same sort of mold. Uh, And for, unfortunately for Brandon Smith of those three or four, he has the least invested in him. You know, he has, whether it's a draft pick, whether it's money uh, he he's got the least invested in, which likely means he'll get the fewest looks, but that doesn't mean that he can't make the team. He's got to make the most of those opportunities. If he is able to do that, maybe he's able to get someone like Simi or, or uh, maybe Noah Brown cut because he's, yeah. he's just shown out and he's shown the ability to do both to play special teams, to be a blocker. And then also on top of that, be a wide receiver. Uh, I know he was a Matt Walbin favorite. We actually had Matt on last year to talk about Brandon Smith. You guys can go check out that episode. He does a really good job of breaking down uh, Smith's strengths and weaknesses. Uh, by the way, I looked it up. The, the tallest receiver the Cowboys have drafted since 2000, Devin Street at 6'3". Like the Cowboys what? just don't draft these big receivers at all. Yeah. Maybe that's why I thought that that uh, Hearns was so big is because I mean he was he was very tall for <laughs> he was like six two uh, and a half for the Cowboys and yeah six two and a half and we're like whoa what a giant <laughs> uh, yeah no I mean I, you know honestly when I think of big bodied receivers like that I think of Plaxico Burris yeah I think of those types, Calvin Benjamin right? Calvin Benjamin yeah just like real big and tall and you know yeah. so it, those are really hit and miss guys like you know what I'm saying so uh, it'll be interesting to see what side of uh, a TJ Vasher falls on that. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL Podcast, where our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed into the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league. Follow Locked On every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts, all the same places that you would get the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Check us out on YouTube. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Cowboys. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I am at Marcus underscore Mosher. We'll be back tomorrow to answer your Twitter questions, talk some Dalton Schultz news, maybe, maybe not news. Who knows? Uh, We'll see you guys right back here tomorrow.